tail that wags. The Shih Tzu is a bold, smart, and adorable little dog. But where did this dog come from? The Shih Tzu is among the oldest breed of dog and is one of the domesticated breeds of dog most closely related to wolves. The Shih Tzu's first ancestors are the Gobi Desert Kitchen Midden Dogs. These dogs roamed Mongolia over 10,000 years ago. These dogs were scavengers, wild and undomesticated. They lived off scraps and waste left by humans. In fact, East Asia is the ancestral origin of the domesticated dog. From the kitchen midden dog evolved the small, soft-coated, drop-eared hunting dog. These ancient pups fought lions in packs. They then produced the Tibetan Spaniel, the Pekingese, the Japanese Chin, the Pug, and the Shih Tzu. It is believed that the Shih Tzu is a cross between the Pekingese and the Lhasa Apso. Tibetan monks gave a Pekingese pup and a Lhasa Apso pup to the Chinese court during the Tang Dynasty during 618 to 907 AD. Shih Tzus appear in Chinese tapestries dating back over 2,000 years ago. Shih Tzus are originally from Tibet and are the oldest and smallest variety of the Tibetan holy dogs. Tibetan monks bred dogs to look like lions. Thus, the translated name for Shih Tzus, the little lion dog. Lions are not indigenous to that region in Asia, but Buddha is said to have rode to earth on a lion. The lion transformed into a Shih Tzu, which Buddha carried in his arms. In addition, Buddha was surrounded by robbers who intended to rob and murder Buddha. Buddha's Shih Tzu morphed into a lion, scaring the robbers away. The lion shifted back into his little dog. Buddha was so grateful, he kissed the wondrous dog on the forehead, leaving a mark. That mark is known today as the Star of Buddha, which is the white mark on a Shih Tzu's forehead. The markings on a Shih Tzu's back represents the saddle Buddha used to ride when the Shih Tzu was a lion. The Shih Tzu was a beloved dog in ancient Chinese times and only royalty could own them. The Shih Tzu's initial job was to bark when any unwanted visitors came to the palace. Later, Shih Tzus were so beloved by the imperial court, they were primarily companion dogs. In addition, it became fashionable to keep a Shih Tzu in one's robe as these pups were used as lap and feet warmers. It was illegal for commoners to own a Shih Tzu. In fact, Shih Tzus were so highly revered, the Chinese refused to trade, sell, or give away one of these dogs to anyone from a different country. The symbol of the Fu Dog is thought to be the lionized version of the Shih Tzu. Males have their paw over a ball representing the world, and the females hold their puppies under their paws representing nature or a nurturing spirit. The Dalai Lama gifted Empress Su Shi with two purebred Sichus. The Sichus breed was perfected by the Empress. She had a pug, Pekingese, and Sichu world-renowned breeding program. Though she kept the breed separate, the palace eunuchs secretly crossed some dogs from the program to create smaller dogs who had unusual markings. However, the Empress breeding program was like no other. When the Empress died in 1908, the kennel was dispersed and Shih Tzus became rare. Some private individuals attempted to continue the breed, but Shih Tzus were nearly impossible to find. In addition, Shih Tzus were almost extinct during the Chinese Revolution starting in 1945. Shih Tzus weren't exported to England until 1930. The English called Shih Tzus chrysanthemum dogs because these pups had fur that grew in various directions and had a button nose resembling the chrysanthemum flower. The breed was revived by seven pairs of male and female Shih Tzus with direct ancestries to the original Shih Tzus living in the Chinese Imperial Palace. Therefore, every Shih Tzu living today is a direct descendant to those 14 dogs. Shih Tzus began to arrive in the U.S. during the 1930s. The pups came into the country steadily after military men came home from World 
War II during the 40s and 50s. People fell in love with the Shih Tzus, and they were initially popular with the wealthy. Britain recognized the Shih Tzu breed in 1946. The American Kennel Club entered Shih Tzus in their stud book in 1969, but were listed under a miscellaneous class because there were so few. In an attempt to preserve and propagate the Shih Tzu breed, the Shih Tzu Club formed in 1957. Several other clubs formed and merged with the Shih Tzu Club, but only 100 dogs were registered with the American Kennel Club in 1961. In 1962, there were 300 registered, and by 1965, there were almost 700 Shih Tzus that were registered to the American Kennel Club. It wasn't until 1969 that the American Kennel Club recognized Shih Tzus as an official breed in the toy class, and these dogs are now among the 20 most popular dogs. The Shih Tzu is a glamorous little charmer. It's easy to fall in love with their cute little muzzle, big brown eyes, and button nose. But Shih Tzus are sporty little pups. They have sturdy muscular bodies, which allows the Shih Tzu to move with precision and speed. Because of this, Shih Tzus win agility contests. In 2014, a Shih Tzu won both an agility and a championship title. Every breed of dog has myths about them. We'll discuss five. Number one, Shih Tzus want to be alpha. Shih Tzus were not bred to be working dogs. They were bred primarily to be companions who lived with royalty and were revered. Furthermore, following directions like hunting and herding dogs do, who require taking instruction, was not part of the Shih Tzus breeding. Although Shih Tzus can be stubborn, they are loving companions who want love and approval from their human. Therefore, Shih Tzus can be trained to happily follow instruction and training. Number two, Shih Tzus are so independent they don't mind staying alone for extended periods of time. Next to the nomad breeds, Shih Tzus are the closest domestic dog related to the wolf. Wolves are very independent. Therefore, Shih Tzus are highly intelligent and independent but independent to a degree. Remember, the Shih Tzus were bred to be companions and companionship is in their DNA. Leaving any dog, especially a Shih Tzu, for any length of time can cause severe separation anxiety. Number three, Shih Tzus don't need to be rewarded during training. As a companion dog, Shih Tzus love and want to please their human. All dogs should be rewarded during training, and Shih Tzus are no different. Reward with some treats and lots of praise when training to be successful. Number four, Shih Tzus are 100% hypoallergenic. No dog is 100% hypoallergenic. Although Shih Tzus may be good for some with allergies, they can be problematic with others. Shih Tzus have hair rather than the average dog's fur. This helps people with allergies, but these dogs have a double coat and their hair sheds like humans. Moreover, Shih Tzus have dander, the flakes of dead skin that floats in the air. Dander is the most common trigger for people with allergies. Also, Shih Tzu puppies tend to shed until they are 9 to 12 months old. And number five, Shih Tzus are yappy. Many people are weary of small dogs because they tend to be yappy. Though Shih Tzus initially barked when unwanted visitors came to the palace, they were made to accompany royalty. So your Shih Tzu will likely bark at the delivery person, but not likely to yap at every noise. Remember, every dog is an individual. Breeding, trading, care, and lifestyle shapes every dog's personality. One dog may have all the traits of a Shih Tzu, while others may not. Quick stats on the Shih Tzus. Shih Tzus are toy breeds and are approximately 8 to 11 inches tall, weighing 9 to 16 pounds. These dogs grow hair similar to a human's and they require regular grooming. Shih Tzus typically live between 10 and 16 years old. The Shih Tzu has an amazing ancestry. The little lion dog is cute, agile, stubborn, but a loving companion who will be at your side for many years to come.